Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Pillars of Eternity 2. As I continue with my blind let's play. I apologize for last time spending about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so on that dang uh, puzzle down, uh, down below. And uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm going to, uh, you know, put a, some a timestamp on where you can skip to so you don't have to sit through all that. Um, we're going to talk to Maya and uh, uh, to Kehu um, in just a second. Um, I think afterwards, I'm going to go... Oh yeah, there's these bounties, that's right. Um, could go after... Uh, I think I'm going to go after some of these bounties. Uh, I think... Oh wow, uh, Asango? Oh really? Okay, so yeah, I need to bring Adara to, back to Asango. Um, anyways, yeah, we have to go back to the ship to get him, but uh, let's talk to Takehu first. I thought Aethys was too busy kicking over islands to blunt his teeth with mortals. What say? You must take something from all this idle chatter with the gods. Well... Aethys was more curious about me than I was about him. And you knew things he did not? Ah. For what does he listen to you, then? The gods I know are tight of lip and hard of hearing. <laughs> That's funny. Why <laughs> Uh... I'm gonna say... I, I guess I'm going to say the first one for right now. He's searching his feelings and needed a, a moral perspective. I could not imagine the inner workings of a god. But then, I am not meant to. It is for mortals to flail in the darkness, I say, while gods point us toward light. Hmm, th this is interesting. Um... I'm gonna say better to let us figure it out for ourselves. I think as he weighs your words, he winces a little. To be worshipped, to have others interpret your design. It is not fair, I say. For what should a god worry about such cares when theirs is the hand on the tiller? Well, maybe they. They worry because, because, like, you know, because their hand is on filler. Then maybe they did not always doubt themselves. At some time, they felt certain. He nods to himself and bites his lower lip. The gods grow. They are like the Adra, holding Aora in place, I say. Moving too slow for mortal eyes. At least Aethys has you to keep him in check. What happens when we catch up to him is something for future Takehu to worry about. Uh, the world around you darkens, and once again you feel an instant tug for your attention. The pull concerning, sorry, centering from Takehu's soul. Uh, I'm gonna surrender myself to it, see what happens. Hopefully this is not bad. You stand in a grand hall underwater and cloaked in oppressive shadows. Pillars of coral and bone reach up to support a ceiling that mo must be hundreds of fathoms away. Chandeliers light the bioluminescent bio sorry, the globes dangle from the long ropes swaying in langered tentacle motions. At the farthest end of the hall sits Andra, a tall, as tall as a castle keep and leaning forward in her throne. She has adopted the head of an anglerfish and regards you with its gobular stare. Her sickle-shaped jaw opens and closes in its rictus of conflicted emotions. Scratch under the wet clay of any artist and you hatch a lifetime of fear and doubt. 
My boy doesn't fear the gods. He only fears what he'll compromise by living up to his potential. But isn't it easier to let sculptures represent you? Poor thing. Nothing he does could disappoint me. But that is a mother's prerogative. She pulls away with a wet, slapping sound. You receive the mental impression of a wink. The world uh, reasserts itself all around you. Takehu wears an uncertain smile, tipping his head inquisitively. I had some questions. You have questions? Ikera, I have answers. Um... The Kahanga royalty seem very taken with you. Now between the Crown and the Guild, Nekataka has high hopes for Ngati's chosen son, I say. The smooth... He smooths back his hair with both hands as he gathers his thoughts. If Ingati had not blessed me, I... I say the goddess touched me for more than enriching one tribe, glorifying one island. You give people hope, Tegehu. If people need hope, they should pray harder, or look to their own grindstone. He gives you an annoyed look, holding it there for longer than necessary before tossing his hair with a gentle squish. I say there is me, Tekehu. And there is the Takei who others would make like a coconut husk doll. You mean the one people would play with? Anyone with the strength to pick me up may play with me, friend Shouty. The more I try to be the Takei who I know I am, the harder I am constrained. What say? Well, no one should pressure you to be something you're not. But it is the adoring people who made Takehu the savior of the tribes. Many think that I have a duty to the Hawana. I say I am the only one unconvinced. That's actually okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this one. I think I'm, I'm the Lady of Cadnua, but you don't see me rebuilding my keep. At least, definitely not yet. Akira, just so. Hesitating at first, Takehu envelops your hand into his. The scales along his palm both prickly and warm. Just as it seems, he will break away. Instead, he leans closer in. I know how I seem. We did not have this word conceded before Adirans landed on the Isles. If Ngati had not touched me, I. I wonder if anyone would care. He seems ready to say more. He stops himself and releases you from his grip. Once again, the world around you darkens, and you feel an instant tug for your attention. Let's do it again. Once again, you find yourself in Andra's waterlogged hall of power. The tired swaying of bioluminescent chandeliers cast uneven rays of light down on our court. Poor boy. He has it backward, as usual. I did not choose him so that he could do great things. I chose him because talent should be fostered toward any end. Sadness and regret creep into her tone, but something about them rings falsely to your ears. How fortunate that you are here to set him on the right path. I know you won't disappoint. Ah, uh, apologies. I say I never miss an opportunity to talk about myself. I had more questions. You have questions? Ikera, I have answers. Uh, yeah, actually I wanted to ask you about Prince Arahi's interest in the black market. Ikera, what say? Um... Where do you fit into the Prince's plan? Haruihi would not have told you the entire story. There is a good reason. Whatever is happening in the gullet, I believe that water shapers are at the center of it. Let me explain. When water shapers are not attending to their duties, they are dispatched into the city. He spits into his palm, concentrating the small puddle rises to take form of a tower. Nekitaka's great sculptures require some maintenance to hold their form. Unless you are Ngati's chosen, Myru keeps a tight leash. Closing his palm into a fist, the tower collapses. One evening, I snuck out and followed a group of shapers. I expected to find myself in Serpent's Crown. Maya thumbs her chin, nodding. And to my surprise, they went down to the gullet. 
You think they were up to something illegal? We are not forbidden from entering the gullet, but it is simply not done. If they have broken the Crown's law, I simply want to know how and why. So why was this unexpected? There are no water sculptures in the Reparo district. Oh, okay. The Crown only flaunts our power where it can be displayed for foreigners. At least, a better class of foreigners than the type who frequent the gullet. So back to my other questions. You have questions? Hey, Kara, I have answers. Uh, where'd you live prior to Nekataka? The Kahanga are my tribe, but my people settled on Atua, an island too modest to deserve the attention of maps. My mortal mother tans boar hides. My father trades in the abundance of pearls and opals Atua is blessed to provide. When I was born, father called me his blue topaz boy. Your birth must have been a big event. Ikera, high winds stirred the vigor of the seas. Two huts collapsed before our local storm speaker could shout down the weather. They say the skies only cleared when I fell into the midwife's basket. Peace had returned to the island. Or so the Mataru predicted. What'd you do around the island? Uh, I could not be kept from the water. So my father taught me how to dive for pearls and azada snails. Ngati filled my palms with riches on every harvest, I say. When I came of an age to begin a man's pursuits, the Mataru reached out to the Kahanga Queen. Weighing my arrival against the forces that descended on her territory, the Queen could not invite Ngati's chosen into the Water Shapers Guild fast enough. In hard times, the endorsement of a goddess is more valuable than currency. Have any other notable godlike come from uh, Atua? Doubtless, I say. But I am the most precious gem of recent history. Godlike are revered as bringers of local change, but only Ingati's Chosen is thought to deliver an omen for all who wanna at once. Palagina shakes her head and adjusts her clothing. So yeah, back to my previous questions. Akira, speak on. Uh, tell me uh, about water shaping, Takehu. Ah, the art of our ancestors, I say. To bend water to our will is a gift from Mother Ngati to her chosen people. Since devastation swept our way of life out to sea, too much of the art has been lost. Periki, founder of the guild, organized the lore of Ngati's talent into a series of postures and meditations we call the four forms of water shaping. Fabrications, I say, meant only to siphon power from her dragon wards. But there is an echo of truth in them still. What are these forms? Try as we might to embody Ngati's element. Our bodies are not water. Ikera, this is the form of grief. A beginner's test. The body's internal water is a force that conquers all. Even the mountain will bow to the stream. The form of hope, I say. Water commands its vessel. And the vessel can be shaped as surely as the mountain. The form of metamorphosis, Ikera? He opens his eyes, which now resemble polished onyx. His smile is hungry, predatory. He blinks, and the effect is gone. The art is a challenge to grasp, difficult to master, and impossible to perfect. Unless you are in Gatti's chosen, I say. Uh, you said there were four forms. Ah, it is only by force of habit that I omit the final form. We do not speak of it in the guild. The form of transcendence. He closes his eyes and concentrates, holding out his palms. He bites his lowered lip and focuses. Finally, he shakes his head and stands at ease once more. Only a story, I say. Even crafty Pariki could not commit this ancient form to her scrolls. It was said that our ancestors could shape the very oceans of the Deadfire. This was Ngati's true gift, but we have yet to recover it from the ruins of our past. Akira, speak on. Um... Your mother has spoken about you. Ngati spoke to you. Ha! <laughs> to leave her son guessing. This is my tricks and mother through and through. You know, I... She... That is a good point. She could be using him to get to me. But I'm not going to tell him that. I'm going to say she seems to care about your well-being. <laughs> what mother doesn't? Shakes her head and adjusts her clothing, Palagina does. You must be special indeed for Ngati to speak with words. 
For her people, she lays out cryptic stepping stones hidden in omens. Akira, but send her my fondest wishes. All right, let's let's be off to Kehu. I'm here. I shall. Who knows, everybody? This might turn into a heavy dialogue episode again, but uh, that's okay. I should come clean about something, Captain. She scratches the back of her head, sighing. This is where you betray me. No. Uh, Maya, of course. Speak your mind. Atsura didn't set me loose just so I could stay busy. Fact of the matter is, he gave me a job to do. Right. I, I, I've kind of figured something of the effect, but what, what was it? I've got this stack of missives I need to deliver. Noble errand, right? She shows you a small collection of scrolls in her pack, all judici judiciously sealed with the sigil of Royal Deadfire Company. So there's two of them. The company has a lot of people working away from headquarters, and Atsura trusted me to get these in the right hands. I hope that isn't a problem. Pajina nods, corners of her mouth turning to a faint grin. Oh. Uh... uh What's in the missives? A bit of everything. Shipping manifests, requisitions for supplies, work orders. Mostly work orders. You wouldn't believe how much paperwork it takes to run a navy. Uh, I ran a grand estate for a time. I, ha I have an idea. Ah, uh, yes. Making good with the locals, paying off bounties. Maybe Aethus did you a favor when he stepped on Cadnua. <laughs> yeah. Um... So yeah. I didn't actually mean that. It's okay. So I'll I'll see what uh we make the deliveries in good time. Appreciate it, Captain. You'd be doing Atsura and the company a big favor. This one's bound for Harama, an acquaintance. Good sailor. He's somewhere off in Tikawara. That sounds like a story. And these are for Tuaha, an old friend stationed in Port Maje. You meet some strange types in the Navy. Gotcha. Well, let's, let's be off for right now. I'm here. Okay, finally we can get off of this uh, rooftop. Um, so yeah, even more more uh, quests, quests have opened up. And that's really exciting. And I just realized I went the wrong way. I am so sorry. Gotta get through all these loading screens. Um... But yeah, what I'll do before we go anywhere else, I think I'm going to go to Hasango first. I need to switch out and get Adair back in the party. Um, I haven't had Aloth back in the party in forever as well. Um, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Yeah, let's go down. But before that, I think I'm going to go to the Brass Citadel and actually report in to the Royal Dead Fire. Uh, given what has just happened at Hasango. And like I said previously, you know, kind of start trying to build more relations with them, etc. Right. Uh, one of these days, you know, one of these videos, I'm gonna actually, uh, you know, check out these estates, but not not today. To the brass citadel. To the imperial. Oh wait. Imperial Command, lower Imperial Command. Um, oh, because I think the lower is the, the one guy. We also need to talk to him, but let's go to just regular Imperial Command right now. Okay. And then go up here. Oh yeah, we need to rest. Grand Secretary Atsura, 
wants to meet with you. He's in his office downstairs. Okay. Um. Did she get her fruit basket? Um. Yeah, I'm gonna ask that. Did you get Queen Onakaza's fruit basket? He, her expression darkens and she draws on her pipe. I got her message all right. She sighs angrily, smoke filtering through her teeth. What was with all the black powder on Hasanga? A look of surprise passes over her face. She tries to cover it with a grunt. Noticed that, did you? Salt Peter is one of our chief resources at Rotai. And we believe in putting resources to use. Now you can see why we didn't want the Valians nosing around our fort. Yeah, because they probably would have took some, but... Anyways, I'll, I'll go meet Asura. Good day. I don't know, the more I think about it... I don't know about, uh, Rautai. Um, granted, I love, uh, Maya. And, you know, just her character and everything, but... In terms of supporting Rautai, I don't know. All right, let's uh it's like he's going to do one thing then he does something else. That's called strategy. And don't you work for Atsura? Clear skies. He tilts his head as he's watching you. His eyes unblinking. So wait a minute. That's weird. I thought I've had I thought I I thought he wanted to see me. I think I've asked these questions before. Okay, what is- I'll just forget it. I know we've asked this, but what- He hesitates. It's a trading post, of course. Yes, but what do you trade? Rawatai is rich in saltpeter, copper, and a few other profitable minerals. We generally trade for food and timber, which grow poorly in the rough country. The Valians have become aggressive competitors in recent years, but our ships were plying the seas long before the Republic's declared independence. We learned the value of defending our goods and ships long ago. I thought he wanted to see us, and I... Uh, so I'm going to say this dialogue option. I think I've said it before. How do you mean that? Um, you're not a soldier. Rawatai is composed of many types, but it's true many here are soldiers and engineers, none of whom are especially diligent about paperwork. Farewell? I'm confused. Was it not him that was on the ship at, uh, Hasango? Am I just crazy? I don't know. I mean, there's the... Oh, he was the one... Oh my gosh. He was the one that gave us the Pokohara stuff. Gosh, so yeah. Recommended Maya, and then for... Uh... Where was it? Yeah, Palagina, so... Regardless of what's gonna happen there, that's gonna probably... Uh... Make the other one mad, so... I, I don't know. I'll admit, a part of me is kinda dreading that uh, choice and in interaction, if it's not obvious. And maybe it's not gonna turn out to be so bad anyway, but... Alright, let us, uh... Let's continue. I guess I thought... There was something else for me here, but apparently not. So I'm gonna go back to the ship. Uh, at least get a dare into the party. Um, Nui leads us, but he represents all of Rao Tai. Then must he put his name on everything? Price share. Don't worry. Simple. The vision's passed. I hope so, Zodi. I'm getting extremely worried for you. Um, this is office. Part of house. Okay. Actually, let's get let's look at the supplies for a second there.
We'll hold on to that for right now. Um, I have the Valiant plate armor. Um, well, I'll get rid of that. And that one. Hang on. Uh, refill supplies? No, not that. Um, yeah, let's uh, get more of this. 900, goodness. Uh, hang on. Let's get five of it, actually. Oh, no, wait. I... There we go, okay. Yeah, I'm actually good on that. Um, we're good on the repair supplies. Tar loaf, that's what I think I, I wanted. Hang on. I can't grab it. There we go. We'll do that for right now. Back to sea. A crowd congests the tunnel ahead of you. A confusing network of natural and kith hewn tunnels run beneath the brass citadel and the gullet. Most of the larger thoroughfares are well-traveled and familiar, but the narrow branches that spread from them are confusing, or are a confusing muddle of twisting halls and dead ends. A tunnel along your path has collapsed. A giant rock, its new immovable door. The labors mill about it, but there seems to little actual laboring occurring. You might be able to find another way through the city, but the detour could take hours. Now let's do uh, streetwise, I think. Find a route around the collapse. Oh well, we have. Can I cancel that? Yes. Let's speak to the workers then. The Raparu mutter among themselves, but grow quiet and avert their gazes as you approach. The Kaharu former gla foreman glances up from a slat of palm and raises a hand. Greetings, noble watcher. We work to fix this tunnel, but for now, then, the way is closed. He bows his head. The servants in Nekataka always apologize for any difficulty or delay. What is this one? Intimidate. Okay. Religion and streetwise. So what happened? One of the reporters shakes his head. Surely you felt it. A great dragon- oh yes, that is right. A great dragon went and flew over the island. It shook the whole city. Karu frowns, frowns at the speaker and waves them are off. You go be quiet. He returns his attention to you. They know better than to blunt their teeth at their betters. The servants Nekataka always apologize for any inhospitality or offense. Gotcha. I'm gonna try to- f Actually, no, I think I can help. Car eyes widen, but watch her. The city given us this task. We say, so we stay working. You need not lift your fingers. Just so, Captain, we should not dirty our beautiful hands doing a laborer's job for them. Takehu tips his head to usher you onward. Uh, come on now. We have the might, I believe. Send someone to push the slab out of the path. Or I say we have the might. I don't know. Actually, no. You know what? Hammer and chisel. You pass the workers. The largest stone fell at an angle, suggesting you might be able to leverage it free. Finding the holes and gaps in the stone, you wind the tunnel opening until you can pass through. Lost an item and two hours passed. A musty wind whistles across your face, a seaborne stench on its breath, bearing a bleating clamor from the darkness, a cacophony of mindless chattering and chirping. For a moment, 
you think you hear someone snapping their fingers. The shadows before you split and twist erratically, congregating and dissolving again before resolving into a bedlam of lethargy wings. Dark home is new home. There's a shrill voice before you, a screech from one of the many lips cowering the tunnel. Leave! They flock forward, hideous cave bats fleeing before them and towards you. The Hawaii scatter in terror, leaving you at to the beasts. Whoops. That kind of reminds me, I need to see Queen's Birth to see how it's faring after the whole dragon incident. Um. Attack! You see that, Ishii? Mode Ixi on us! Lavaru beyond seek! Here! Grey, Nice. Speak your mind. I am the Alpha Predator. Oh, okay. For my captain. You need something. Yeah, there we go. Next time, a challenge. And we'll just uh, stash all this. All right. Uh, yeah, actually, let's quickly go to Queen's Birth really fast. You hear someone call out for your attention. Okay. You're wandering through the streets when a man approaches you, cutting through the crowd. You've never seen him, but the look in his eyes suggests he recognizes you. Watcher, let me through. A metal... Folk man emerges from the crowd, red face and wild hair. He pays you no mind to the irritating pede pedestrians glowing at him. Uh, but uh, his bright eyes are fixed on you. You're looking fervent as always, Lutheran. Uh, Zodi just adjusts her chin in uh, uh, brusque uh, greeting. In response, the missionary puffs out of breath. Suppose that was a compliment coming from you. Indeed, I strive to follow the light and godliness. Of course, it was. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Zodi's words speak to innocence, but her grin is too rough, too wolfish. Then allow me to re return the gesture. I'd say you seem darker than usual, however, uh, Harvester. It shrouds you, all that death and heresy. Reckon I'll hold my tongue from now on, Zodi immediately bristles. Ignoring her hard scowl, the Theron resettles his gaze on you. You, you're the one who s what saw the miracle when Aethys rose at Cadnua. Awe and conviction quiver in his voice. Well, yeah, frankly, his rising was a tragedy. Every other w man and woman and child at the keep died. Well, surely to be reborn in glory, don't you think? He grimaces, not entirely certain of his answer. Our people talk highly of you. It's no wonder Aethys chose you to witness his return. That's why I'm hoping you can help. The tiniest flicker of doubt dances across his face. He banishes it with a deep breath and launches it into his tail. I've been having strange dreams. A wheel that spins and spins. An orchid of uh, koiki trees, each grown from the fallen fruit of the last. He scratches at his whisker chin. Then, the spokes of the wheel break apart. The trees stop growing. Fruit falls and rots until the ground is covered with festering, uh, stinking pulp. There must be s some meaning behind this. 
That's what I fear. He pauses, working anxiously at the helm of his tunic. In these dreams, I also see you at the center of the wheel in the middle of the orchid. Orchard, sorry. Uh, you were there when Aethys rose, and you seem to follow every place he's been. He works his mouth into a fretful pout as he gets to the crux of his uh, concerns. Aethys has always meant rebirth and redemption. But so much death falls in his wake, both in the Saints' War and now here again. His white eyes are full of questions. Um, I'm just going to tell him for now, there are no easy answers. My people followed Aethys to war once. I wonder sometimes if we failed him when we lost. Or if we did that the moment we laid hand to the blade. Please, you've seen more than anyone. You've got to have some idea what it all means. And how to, it, uh, we make sense of it. Oh boy. Um... Uh, let's see. Ooh, some interesting answers here. Um, I'm going to say hmm. part of me doesn't want to tell him how to, you know, respond, you know, have him figure it out for himself. Um, Uh, I don't know if this is going to be the right answer, but I'm going I'm to say this. The Dawn Stars have survived because of the community they formed. You don't need Aethys for that. Never thought of it that way. Uh, Zodi lifts her chin in interest. What is this symbol? Well, okay. Uh, Lotharan nods, let, letting, his sink, letting this sink in. I won't keep you, but you've given me a lot to think about. Thank you. He turns away and allows himself to melt into the crowd. See, so yeah, I'm not sure if that's the right answer in, in terms of, uh, uh, you know what Zodi would think. But alas. But yeah, let me just quickly check on Queen's birth. Okay, in terms of map, it looks like it's it's mostly fine. I just thought I remember seeing a uh, reading that the dragon came to the southwest of Nakataka, and this is this is the, that spot. But oh no, it's not fine, not quite. A little bit of damage. I take it back. Um, it might just be the one spot. Anyways. Okay. I also wanted to come and hear this wonderful music once again. It's so good. Alright. Let's leave the city. Finally. Again. But I'll be back. Alright, we're going to now switch out Pelagina for Adair. I'm tempted to get Aloth back in here. Um, but I don't know. And now, of course, Takei who can heal. Yes, uh, so... Let's try that. I'm gonna get Aloth back in here because I'm gonna be going after Adair's quest line. Like you mentioned, Alan. Uh, now, granted, I, of course, I missed the dialogue, the you know, back in the temple 
that you mentioned before. There might be something else coming up, so... And besides, I need to level him up anyways. I would have thought there had to have been a way to level them up on this screen. I feel really silly if I'm, I'm just not seeing it. You know, just to be safe, in case we get stopped by a, a ship or something, let me let me go back to port, level them up, and then we'll go to Hasongo. Okay, there. Athletics and survival. Then you're gonna have that again. Okay, and then he has that. Let's give him a larger shield. Okay. Three streetwise and explosives. We'll do the unbending, and then... What is this? Increase the character's deflection defense. Actually, yeah. Because he's winning a shield, let's let's do that. There we go. Aloth. Arcana, of course. And then... Let's do history for you. It's only one point. Um... Well, that's cool. It summons a black sphere and draws all nearby characters towards it each time it pulses. Switching locations ability. We do wall of fire. We're already getting that one. Um, which one's this one? Okay. Wait, do we not have this? Oh, that's right, the health draining over time. That's why I didn't pick that one. I was wondering. Um... Let's do the dimensional shift, just in case Aloth needs to get out of a, you know, a bad situation. So he's got wands and a scepter. Do you have a wall, uh, rod? Oh, the heck with it, yeah. Okay, and then Arcana and History again. Blast of Frost. I don't remember if I had that one last time or not. I might have, but if, I, if it's the one I'm thinking of, that was actually really good. Oh, yeah, and also the Wall of Force. Um, which one's this one? Spirit Lance. I think I'm going to do this Ice ability. Oh, and I have one more ability uh, point, so... Oh yeah, and the Rapid and Forecasting. You know what? Let's do Forecasting for Aloth. And I just thought about it, he probably needs... Actually, both Adair and him need near uh, gear. Saints War armor... Oh, and that gives him a second chance. That's the only thing I'm kind of hesitant of giving that up, because that's really handy. Fine leather... Okay, that's, that's what it was. So... I thought I had... Just crazy. I thought I had like a, a better leather armor than that. I might just I might just be thinking of something else. Got the scale mail. Maybe I'm just thinking of the regular fine leather. That's okay. 
Alright. In that case... Let's give him this. Raise his intellect. And I, I guess that's it. We need more accessories at some point. Frankly, we need a lot of things. Oh yeah, that's right. So he has the scepter in his hand. He now, they now can have the wand. That's the mace. What's the wand? Or not the wand, the rod. Okay. I'm tempted to give him that. Let's try it for right now. Nice. Alright, switch a dare to here. Actually, uh... Yeah, we'll switch him there. Speak your mind. Aye. And Aloth actually lets speak. Great and terrible things are at work. And once again, you seem to be in the middle of it. Aleth is twisting the edge of his sash between his hands, a purposeful frown on his face. The Rawatayans we passed will doubtless spread word of what you've done in Hisongo. But others will want to know what you've seen. They'll look to you for answers. Uh... I have to report truthfully, I think. You make it sound so simple. Don't you worry what will come next? What events you might move forward? Well, okay, what what is this really about, Alof? He sighs through his nose and his lips pressed together. It reminds me of the question that drew me to the dead fire. The one I've been avoiding. I promised to tell you what I was doing among the Animancers at Port Marge. Yes, exactly. As you may have guessed, I was observing them. Gathering information on the various Animancy operations in the region. What for? Animancy is a subject of particular interest to the Leaden Key. Through it, I hope to pick up the trail. And, and then? That's where it gets complicated. Okay. After that incident in Old Valia, I thought more about the Leaden Key and its particular composition. Go on. It's existed for over 2,000 years. Say what you will about its motives and methods, but that's an impressive tenure. I hope you got a while, because I got lots to say about their motives and methods. I'm sure you do, Adair. I'm sure, but uh, imagine what we could learn from them. He turns back to you. That's when I realized how short-sighted I'd been. To think I could change the leaden key without understanding how it works. I'm just gonna listen. Uh, hear him out. I found references to an ancient leaden key cabal in the dead fire. Possibly one of the oldest, if accounts are credible. And they appear to have been working independently, without direct intervention from Theos, for almost two millennia. It, really? That's kind of crazy. Um... So, you think by observing them, you can learn how the Leaden Key works? And how to reform it, yes. Most sources refer to them as the Painted Masks. But I haven't met anyone here who knows that name. I don't know where in the Deadfire they are exactly. But I was hoping we could look for them together. I'll help as best I can, uh, Aloth. That's all I ask. He bows his head. I'm actually glad I, you know, talked to him again. Let me talk what to Adair again. It's been, it's been a while. What's on your mind? Uh, actually, no. You have nothing new to say, so we're good. Let's let's see if we can find uh, your friend. Of course. All right. Back to the ship. I just realized the the food I just bought not long ago. I need to put it on the ship. Uh, where is it? There it is. Put 
that there. And then there. Bear with me, everybody. That lowers morale. Well, let's put an egg. Why not? Wait, what'd that do? Hang on. Hang on. Okay, so not, no increase in morale, but a plus one to might. Plus three to morale, dang. So 15% action speed, minus one to dexterity. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, actually, let's switch that out with the water. And I might as well put this water on there anyway, but... Because um, I think it goes from left to right in terms of consuming it. We'll see, though. Alright, before we travel, let me save it. Let me save it right now. Okay. And then... Off to Osango. I like this song. Hopefully you guys can hear it. It always makes me, makes me sad when uh, I uh, get to a port or something, and they're you know they're singing and everything, and then I have to uh, undock and you know stop the stop the singing. All right, what's the name? Hang on. No. Okay, here we go. Alafa. Dawnstar seemed to think Alafa settled on Hosanga with her son. Okay, it's not them. There was one place we hadn't really checked, which was... I think the dining hall, the engineer workshop? Maybe we did check those. Um, I don't know. We'll, uh... We'll continue to look. Let me just look around right here. Okay. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Maybe they know. We'll strengthen Hasango so it can weather anything. Nope, never mind. There's the kitchen, there's that. Let me go over to the dining hall. Or if not the dining hall, let me... You know what? We haven't, uh... Well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I've been here. Or maybe I have, I don't remember. Let's let's go in here first, the engineer's workshop. Oh wait, no, it's this guy. I have been here. What am I saying? What am I saying? I'll take care of it. Oh, I can take that. Okay. Uh actually let me talk let me go talk. Maybe they know. Do you need something? If not, I should focus. So much to do. Ah, uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Let's go to the kitchen.
Gotcha. So yeah, that just leads back, I'm pretty sure, to... Uh, yeah, the other spot. Unless there's a... Hang on. Swim to the passage. Uh, orient yourself in the passage. So yeah, let's go right. Or to the... Uh, only it says go down left. Okay, go down left. Swim onward. Partial success. Okay, my appears to be struggling. You grab my uh, trembling arms and pull your companions toward the light. You reach the wood panel wall with a ruined green banner. You push towards it. Okay. I was injured. That's right, we haven't rested. We haven't rested yet. I keep forgetting. So yeah, we have been here. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing a... Uh, you know, a, a passage somewhere. Hang on, let's go back out. After all that, just, I get Maya injured. And you know what? Yeah, because of that, let's make camp. We haven't made camp in a long while. And we'll rest uh, nine hours. There we go. Maybe they're actually in the Fleet Master's office? Let me just go quickly look. It's bad when I don't remember if I have went in there or not. You know? Let me just go quickly check. Yeah, I don't think I have been in here, so... I'll this. Fine pistol. Letter from Latharn. Ko, you've... No, I've never been one for superstition, but I'm telling you, there's something to these dreams. Couldn't tell you what they mean. Only that they wake me three times a night. All of us working your farms. Uh, pious Athasians to a man. Or having them too. I've got no mind to tell tell you how to run your fort. But I've got to look after my brother in here. We left our homes and families back in Raid Saris. Now we're seeing strange things and laboring next to the Duke's ransom in Black Powder. Or did you reckon a dumb hick like me wouldn't notice? We'll take that letter. I'll take care of this. Okay, let's, uh, let's go up here. I'm pretty sure it's in Hasango, they said. I'm gonna laugh if it was, if it was actually at the, the lighthouse and I just didn't realize it. Or maybe I literally missed it from right there, I don't know. Let's try to climb the tower. Force of success. Maya, once again, as you watch her hands slip from the stone, she lays the base of the tower with pain and help. Once again, so I'm sorry, Maya, you were injured. I had forced to climb back down. Dang it. Um. Anyways, let us wait just two hours this time. Or maybe that the resting goes eight hours, and I've and that was just for waiting. Oh well, alas. Um, actually, I think that's where I'm gonna cut uh, this video f uh, for today. I know we're still trying to find Adair's companion. Um, 
but we'll, we'll see what, what, you know, what happens in the next video, and I'll, you know, uh, start doing other quests as well. Uh, but as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in and watching another episode. I greatly appreciate it. Wherever you guys are, have a good day, have a good night, and take it easy.